Now, I was flipping through my fishing journal the other day, and it reminded me of a story. Now, if you don't keep a fishing journal, you ought to consider it. Here's a page from mine from February of 2019. I was on the Gunpowder River. I got to the river at 7.15 in the morning. That was sunrise. I logged the water conditions, flow, temperature, clarity, those kind of things. And the air temperature was two degrees. Yeah, you heard that right. I don't know what I was thinking either. But here's what caught my attention, and I wouldn't have remembered this if it wasn't in the log. And it's that I only caught two fish that day, and I caught them on a nymph that I created the year before while fishing in Hawaii. And that's what reminded me of this story. I used to travel to Hawaii a lot for work, several times a year, two or three weeks at a time. And what a lot of people don't know is that of all the islands of Hawaii, there is one, Kauai, that way up in the top, above 3,500 feet of elevation, there is a population of wild rainbow trout. They're obviously not native. They were brought in in the 1920s. I think they stocked 10 of the small streams up at the top of the mountain. And of those 10, 100 years later, only three of them still have trout. But the cool thing is, these three streams are rarely fished. I mean, there are a lot of streams in Kauai with hiking trails that are pretty popular, but these three with the wild rainbow trout, they're not very well publicized and they're not at all easy to get to. It's roughly a two hour drive from your hotel at the beach. You need a four wheel drive. And then you've got a pretty tough hike through some really dense vegetation just to get to the fishable water. But when you do get there, it's really cool. It is a lot of pretty skinny water with the occasional waterfall. And then every once in a while, a pool that's going to be big and deep enough to hold a handful of trout. Now, the fish there are not big. Most of the ones you catch still have their par marks. You might occasionally get the eight or nine incher. Except this one time. After two years of fishing these streams and not ever catching anything bigger than nine inches, I finally hook into a big one. He took a prince nymph. I really wasn't expecting it. I kind of panicked, didn't get a good hook set, and he got off. This was in May in a pool about 20 feet wide at the bottom of a 12 or 15 foot waterfall. And I did fish that hole a couple more times again that trip, but I never saw him or hooked up with him again. Now, my next mission out to Hawaii was in September. And obviously, my first stop when I'm fishing is that waterfall and using a prince nymph again. And this time, I hook him again within the first five minutes, but I was ready for him. I got a good hook set, but I still blew it, and he broke me off. Now, that's heartbreaking, but it's also kind of encouraging that a fish I hooked back in May, four months later, he's still in this pool, so I'm thinking this is probably his home, and I know I'll be back in a few months. And this day, I remember very distinctly, because the day after Thanksgiving, I was fishing on the Savage River in six inches of snow, Two days later, I was wet wading at the top of a mountain in Hawaii. But this time, that big fish either wasn't there or he wasn't cooperating. No luck at all in the Prince Nymph, and I needed a pretty heavily weighted nymph because it was pretty turbulent water at the bottom of the waterfall, and I needed something to punch through it and get down there where I'd been hooking him. Um, I tried Copper John's, other bead heads, some flashback Fezzetel, but nothing, no luck with any of those. So then I pull out another weighted nymph I have in my box. It was just an olive and black, pretty generic fly that I tied up in the hotel room the night before. And this one, finally it worked. The big guy took it. And after two hookups and six months of chasing this guy, I finally land him. And I know what you're wondering, how big was this fish? Did I land some 22 inch monster in a tiny stream at the top of a mountain in Hawaii? Well, no, I didn't, and this fish would not be considered a trophy anywhere here on the mainland. But after not catching anything bigger than 9 inches and 2 years of fishing these waters, this 14-inch wild rainbow trout, it was kind of a trophy to me. And that kind of chase and excitement, that's really what we live for. So this pattern I got him with, what I'm about to tie for you now, it's really nothing special. There are a thousand other similar patterns out there like this, but this one, it's kind of special to me. And it's worked for me a few places here on the East Coast, and I've tied it and fished enough that I eventually just started calling it my waterfall nymph. And I know that's not a very original name, but I've been calling it that for a couple of years, so I'm kind of sticking with it. And if nothing else, every time I pull it out, it's a nice reminder of that nice fish that I spent several months chasing a few years ago back in Hawaii. So there it is in the vise, what I call the waterfall nymph, just a fairly generic black and olive nymph. And I tied this on a 14 or 16. This one's a 14. 
And since I didn't put a bead on it, I did put a little bit of weight, just five, maybe six wraps, just enough weight that it would, you know, be about as heavy as a bead. And black thread, I'll put a little dam behind it, up over it in front, and then take it back to the tail. And the tail I've always used, just 10 or 12 fibers from black hen. So it's not a lot and not real long. So let's do a couple wraps and then check our length and position. I think that's perfectly fine right there. Now here's where I sometimes got crazy. I did several of them with just a, a yellow thread rib and some with just a red. And then I tried it with red and yellow because why not? And did the red one outperform the yellow one or the red and yellow? I have no idea. I'll bet it doesn't make much of a difference at all, but it was still kind of fun to use two colors for a rib. And the dubbing I used originally was a beaver, and this is a beaver, but I pulled the guard hairs out. So if you have beaver and you pull the guard hairs out, it's not really that different from rabbit. So I would just, any fur you want, rabbit's fine. Probably wouldn't go with the synthetic as it is a nymph and you want it to hold water. But maybe a three inch noodle here, we're just gonna dub it all the way up there to where we put the front hackle on. And I do want to put one wrap behind this rib. So let's go back there and work that behind it. That way my rib is not starting at the tail, but will be starting just a, a little in front of it. Okay, I have a little bit more dubbing than I need, and that's a little bit too far forward. I could back some of that out, or just uh, I'll wrap my hackle head over it. It's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, so just wrap this rib up, and you could spin it together if you wanted. If you wanna try this little two color trick, that's great. If not, just uh, whatever you wanna do. Single color, double color, spin it together. However, I think it's gonna be just fine. Now, if you see what I'm talking about here, that's a little bit too much dubbing right there. So I'm just gonna to try to flatten this down, make an area where I can wrap this collar hackle. And the front hackle is just another feather from that black hen. Not real long, but you know, we do want it swept back a little bit. So it's not an insignificant front hackle. Several wraps, get that in. Now trim this stem and then let's wrap it up. Two or three wraps is probably about all we're gonna want. Okay, that is two full wraps right there. Let's just, let's go with that. One more I think would be a little bit much. So let's catch this off and then sweep the head back. Okay, when you got your head big enough, let's go ahead and do a four or five turn whip finish. And now see if we have any cleanup. Obviously get rid of this excess right here. And I might have a little bit of cleanup. Some of these hackle feathers are going all over and I got a little bit uh, of that, some of those guard hairs from that beaver coming down right there. But really, it's a fuzzy fly and it works just fine being fuzzy. So I'll probably put a drop of head cement on this one and just call it done. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.